right friends this is the first capsule for 40th week this is on monetary policy all of you are familiar with the news that governor of reserve bank of india urjit patel took over from raghuram rajan recently and now monetary policy committee was also devised by the central government and monetary policy committee as we have already learnt has got the six members three external members please look at this slide three external members are pami juwa chetan ghate and ravindra dhulakia and these three members were nominated by the central government for a fixed four year term three internal members governor of reserve bank of india reserve bank of india deputy governor ramasubramaniam gandhi and executive director michael patra so these six members constitute the monetary policy committee and the six member committee has recently announced the first monetary policy that means after the constitution of six member committee this is the first time that the policy was announced and two things are very important reserve bank of india kept its internal target of 5% inflation by march 2017 and if you peruse the figures for august 2016 inflation rate that is a consumer price index based inflation which rbi considers is around 5.05% and in fact for september 2016 it further reduced to below 5% and at the same time central government also stipulated the cpa based inflation target of 4% plus or minus 2% valid up to march 2021 so under these circumstances that means as the inflation is well under control and at the same time monsoon registered normal rainfall in most of the meteorological regions across the country so under the circumstances reserve bank of india that is the monetary policy committee decided to reduce repo rate by 0.25% and the present policy rates policy rates and reserve ratios these two are important and key parameters policy rates means interest rates then reserve ratios means these are the percentages that means fixed percentages so minimum banks have to follow for keeping money aside so policy rates repo rate which basically determines the general interest rate structure in the economy was reduced by 0.25% and is now stands at 6.25% and crr unchanged at 4% that is cash reserve ratio and statutory liquidity ratio is at present 20.75% and from january 1 2017 it will become 20.50% so these are the policy rates and reserve ratios so what is the outcome i have listed out some points here logically when the countries are developing when the under developed countries are becoming developing countries and when developing countries are inching forward to become developed countries normal tendency is interest rate structure will reduce will come down so for growth to take place normally interest rate structure will come down if you look at advanced economies like united states of america or france or germany or japan interest rate structure will be abysmally low and if you look at emerging economies like india interest rate structure will be somewhere in the range of 5% 6% 7% something like that so now the repo rate is 6.25% and please don't forget for the past 21 months since january 2015 reserve bank of india reduced repo rate by 1.75% that is 175 basis points in banking parlance one percentage is 100 basis points so the repo rate was reduced by 175 basis points and 
the overall interest rate on loans was reduced to the extent of just 0.5 to 0.7 percent. So, monetary transmission is not happening in the country. That is the biggest worry for Reserve Bank of India or the economy. Right? So, monetary transmission means when Reserve Bank of India is reducing repo rate, it should have similar effect on the loan rate structure that is known as monetary transmission. Because of several reasons, monetary transmission is not taking place in this country in recent times. And to ensure monetary transmission, Reserve Bank of India brought MCLR, marginal cost of funds based lending rate. But even then also, monetary transmission is not taking place properly. Right. And I have given one point here. That is, credit offtake in the banking system is not satisfactory. In spite of reduction in interest rates, credit is not taking off. That means, the credit offtake is not satisfactory. And the probable reasons are, High non-performing assets, public sector banks especially are suffering because of high non-performing assets. Then second important point is several sectors like power, steel, infrastructure, textiles are overstressed. They are facing the heat of slowdown in the global economy and at the same time, Several bottlenecks are there in the economy like environmental issues, coal linkages. So, these are the structural bottlenecks in our country. So, because of all these reasons, several sectors like power, steel, infrastructure, textiles are overstressed already. That's why credit offtake is not satisfactory. And the case it point is recently, SR Group sold its oil business for around 13 billion dollars, including the captive port. Basically, to reduce their debt, recently, SR sold its oil business. Then, under utilization of existing capacity, lack of demand, not able to compete with other countries. So, these are the reasons why credit is not taking off. So, when the Reserve Bank of India reduced repo rate, there is a no guarantee that the credit will take off from the banking system because of all these reasons. And now, I would like to tell you other decisions of monetary policy. I listed here two decisions. One is startups can access external commercial borrowing. Startup companies now can access external commercial borrowing and you may ask what is meant by external commercial borrowing. External commercial borrowing is borrowing by Indian government companies as well as private sector corporations from abroad. Now, startups are also allowed and details will be given by the end of this month. And the second thing is, Reserve Bank of India will modify rules and regulations with regard to S4A. You may ask what is meant by S4A. S4A is Sustainable Structuring of Stressed Assets. S4A is Sustainable Structuring of Stressed Assets. And this was brought so as to take care of bad debts. And let us take the case that company has borrowed from the banking system rupees 100 crores. If the equated monthly installment is 1 crore, the company is required to pay 1 crore as EMI. But company can pay every month only 60 lakhs. And so as to take care of the payment by the company up to the extent which the company can pay to the bank, then the debt will be divided into sustainable debt and equity or quasi-equity. So, one part is sustainable debt, other side it is equity or quasi-equity. So, like that, debt will be bifurcated, that is S4A and we have deliberated about S4A in previous lectures. Please view those lectures. So, banks are not in a position to ensure 
take off of this program and banks expressed some difficulties that's why reserve bank of india will issue some modifications shortly right friends these are the important aspects of monetary policy of reserve bank of india and let us wind up first capsule please do join for second capsule which will be on nobel prizes right friends have a nice day thank you